you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are Leah Sings. That makes it official. Thank God after 16 years I don't have to sing that line anymore. I'm so over it, and I'm pretty sure the audience was. Although people like running up to me and screaming at me, and then I call security on them, have them removed from the building. So, guys, we have an amazing author on the show. We're going to talk about his insightful book that's going to expand your mind, make you smarter. And if not, we're going to have to come out there and fix you. Refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. It always starts with a threat and violence. Refer the show to family, friends, and relatives, or else. Go to Goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Voss, YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Voss, Chris Voss, one in the TikTokity, and Chris Voss, Facebook.com. I don't know. Just go to them all and just press all the buttons, see what happens. Today, we have Brian Gottlieb on the show with us today. He's a multi-book author, I believe. He has written his latest book that's coming out September 10th, 2024, called Beyond the Hammer, A Fresh Approach to Leadership, Culture, and and building high-performance teams. Welcome to the show, Brian. How are you? Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. And by the way, not only do you always have great guests on, you certainly have the best intro out there in podcast land. I've heard that. Everyone freaks out over it. They're like, oh, my God, it's so great. We're just here for the brain bleed. So, Brian, you're an inspirational business leader who founded a home services business in 2009 on a plastic folding table with $3,000. I did that with when I was playing. I was going to grow up and be Scarface one time, but that's a different story. That was in the 80s. 12 years later, when he sold the family of businesses that he created at that table, they had diversified products that span across multiple states, grown to 600 employees, and neared one billion in lifetime sales. Inc. 5000 recognized the organization as one of the fastest growing companies in America. And now he joins us on the show with his spectacular insights. Welcome to the show, Brian. Again. Hey, thanks for having me. Really, really, really looking forward to what we're going to talk about today, whatever that might be. Let's do it. Give us your dot coms to lead off. Where do you want people to find you on the interwebages in the sky? Sure. Just it's super easy. Brian Gottlieb.com. G-O-T-T-L-I-E-B. Nice and easy. Nice and easy on the cover of the book, too. It's easy to spell out there. So give us a 30,000 overview. What's in your new book, Beyond the Hammer? Well, you know, if you're, if you're a leader, a manager, an entrepreneur that is running a business or a team and things aren't going as planned, I think everybody knows the frustration that that causes. It's aggravating. It's exhausting. And it doesn't have to be like that. So Beyond the Hammer is a fresh approach to leadership and, and how to build high-performance teams. And it really comes down to how do you get the best out of people and, and create a great aligned team, people full of purpose. That's what the, the book's about. Why Why is it entitled Beyond the Hammer? Is that is that a reference to, I, I might be putting words in your mouth, but is that a reference to, you know, some people in management just see every problem just needs a hammer? Or what does what the uh, Beyond the Hammer mean? The, the reference to it is that in this case, the book was written in two sections. The first half is a parable because I like huh. stories. And mm -hmm. the second half is very actionable where it's how to plug the lessons of the parable into your business. So in the first half of the book, the, the character is a contractor and he has to get beyond the hammer to really work on developing people because if you want to build a business let's face it you got to be committed to building people that's very true that's a great point too because you know i think a lot of people forget that you know you talk about culture in your book we talk about culture a lot on the show it's one of my favorite topics right now my yeah. audience is probably rolling their eyes oh god he said <laughs> leadership and culture again but it's inherent to a successful business as you found raising yours and building yours i found very early on culture is one of the most important blueprints or foundations you set down at the start of a company or if you come in if you come in acquiring something or maybe you've been appointed ceo You've got to, you've got to reestablish that by cracking the whip. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so, Brian, give us a thirty thousand, not a thirty thousand over you. It's Monday. Brian, give us, tell us a little about yourself. What was your upbringing? What got you into your influences? You know, childhood and got you into being an entrepreneur. Who who hurt you basically is what the question is. 
Yeah. So look, it, like a lot of entrepreneurs, I didn't go to college. I went straight out of high school selling pots and pans door to door. Brother and, and from another thing. mother you are. <laughs> I didn't go to college either. Yeah. yeah I, I've been a, an entrepreneur at heart and you know, I had a lot of fun. I, I love selling. I love being at the kitchen table, telling my story. And the idea that when I was 18 years old, I could knock on a stranger's door and then two hours later, I can walk out with a check in my hand. That was super exciting. But, I do that know, when they're not there. <laughs> that's, that's even easier, right? <laughs> Don't do that, folks. Yeah, so I just stayed in the industry and, and sold, moved from pots and pans into selling home improvements. And in 2009, it was just time to maybe do it for myself. I think I spent many years making other people rich, and I wanted to try it for myself. And so the $3,000 and a plastic folding table got me going. <laughs> I started my first, I started my first company at 18 with probably nothing, but I mean, it wasn't a big earner, but the first big company that we built, we started with $2,000 and a year and a half later, we started a second company on top of it for $4,000, turned them both into multimillionaire companies. Yeah, so I great. feel you, it's man. Cool. Yeah. You know, what, I mean, what a great story to, to build from $3,000 and a plastic table you know, business, you, you hear all these people that like, well, I don't have enough money to start my own company. I need investors. I need a VC. You know, I need to do it when the time is right. I have plenty of money to lose or something. I don't know. And, you know, here you built your business in, with 3000 bucks. Now, is this your first book? I, I can't remember. This is my first book. It took me two exactly. years to write it. So I'm hoping my next book takes a little sh is a little shorter. But I you think know, that's when you why I was thinking you're a multi-book author. You said that in the green room. And I was like, oh, maybe there's multiple books then. Yeah, you know, but when you go back to talking about culture, right? So mm -hmm. in the beginning, when you first start a business as, as the entrepreneur and the only employee in the organization, you know, s success comes down to how well the entrepreneur executes. But when you start to grow a business, now you have to start hiring people and how people perform both in the leader's presence and in the absent, in their absence actually <laughs> defines the success of an organization. So culture and mindset, I mean, that, that's key to growing a business. Mm -hmm. Creating the right team and culture that makes a difference in your business the community the book is built at. You got Wolfgang Puck to put the lead quote on here for the endorsement. Yeah. How'd you get that? I love Wolfgang Puck. His food is amazing. I used to practically live every week in Vegas at, at where did I, what's this most famous? Spago. Spago, Spago in Vegas, yeah. right? Yeah. Great yeah, place. Spago, yeah, Vegas and place. Spago's in Hollywood. Yeah. So while I didn't go to college, when I was about 55 years old and my business was at the time was probably doing, I don't know, maybe I was 54, the business was doing maybe $30 million. Mm -hmm. I realized that I had no idea what I was doing, Chris. I had no idea how to run a $30 million company. And, yeah, and, the biz, and I was essentially the bottleneck in the organization. So I heard about this, this executive education program at Harvard Business School. I, uh -huh. I, I, I applied for it not thinking they'd ever accept me. It was more like on a dare. So I applied, but they did it. They accepted me. I was excited and petrified at the same time, but it was a three-year program that I went through at Harvard Business School. And in my class was Wolfgang Puck. Really? Now, just to give you a little, I'll give you a little Wolfgang story. So when you're at Harvard, you have to live on campus at the, in their executive ed program. You live on campus for three weeks in a dorm and you share a dorm with seven other people from oh. seven other areas in the world, all with seven other areas of business expertise. And you talk about case studies. When Wolfgang came to class and came to his dorm, there was a computer in his room, like with all the rooms. He didn't even know how to turn a computer on. He admitted that, <laughs> that he never had to turn a computer he on. He knows how to turn a stove on, but he doesn't but, know but, but what a great, great entrepreneurial story he has. Just a super great yeah. human being. Just lovely, lovely person. Yeah. So we became friends. That is awesome. I'm jealous. Yeah. Did he cook for yeah. you? <laughs> he, he actually did on our graduation. He brought his oh, whole team he? in and wow. made wonderful lamb chops and all kinds of stuff. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah he makes some of the best food. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. It and, is. It, I, I just love going to Spagos. It was always, it, you know, just there were so many flavors there that he has. And there's a lot more. I don't know. There's a lot more great restaurants and, and chefs around, but kind of back in the 70s, 80s, he kind of had the corner on the market. I he, think he sure did. He was really probably the first real chef, other than maybe Julia Child, that built yeah. this brand. It was the only place I could go back then. Yeah, I said, man, it really sounded old. The 80s and 90s, the 90s. It, it was the only place to go back then, where when you'd eat a plate of his food, you would experience tastes that you'd never experienced before. Right. Yeah, and yeah. So, so his steakhouses, by the way, cut are fantastic. If you ever go to a Cut Steakhouse, I been to cut. His, they're wonderful. Is and, it in Vegas? They have they have one in New York, and they they have them all over the place. One in mm -hmm. London, they have to check. Yeah. 
Yeah. So give us some some more samples out of the book. Maybe do you want to tease out the the story that you used to the parable or yeah, sure. So the, the, the parable is set up in the way it, George is the main character and he's struggling is he, he inherited the business from his dad and he's just struggling with burnt out employees, people not taking ownership of their work, inconsistent results, shrinking margins. Look, none of the things that any entrepreneur ever experiences, by the way. No, these are all the common challenges. And, and he meets this mentor named Marty and he learns these five foundational pillars of leadership to create an aligned team that performs consistently and at a, at a high level, which by the way, is important for every business out there. It's, it's again, how do you move from, from the business depending upon your activities to be successful to your teams? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, it's, look, it's not an easy process. You know how it is when you're building a business. It's the, 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 the first instinct is want to, is to want to control every aspect of the business, but we know that's truly not scalable mm -hmm. unless if you want to have a, a a manual of, of, of policies that are 12 inches thick and people to enforce those policies. Really, it's about how do you empower people, but not in a woo-woo sense. It's how do you, what, what is the process to truly empowering people and to truly developing the best inside of the person? It's, it makes all the difference in the world. What's the other thing I was looking for? On the second part of this section, yep. you have actionable path that you provide to weaving five pillars from the story uh, that you tell in any business enabling leaders to integrate the principles in their daily operations seamlessly. Would you want to tease a few of those out or maybe all five? Sure, sure. Yes. Yeah, so as I said, the first part of the book is a parable and it's a story and these five pillars are revealed. But in the second half, I think people want, look, at least I wanted when I read a book, I wanted something that would had easy entrance and exit points because I mm -hmm. can't necessarily sit down and dedicate eight hours to reading a book. So I wanted to be able to come in and out of it when I needed to. But then I also wanted something that wasn't theoretical, that was highly actionable and applicable to my business that I can truly plug in. And that's what I wrote in this mm -hmm. book. So the five pillars that, that were revealed, one of them is one that's known as belief is transferable. And it's the idea that, and I use the analogy in the book that, you know, when my, when my kids were little and they w were on training wheels and they, it was time to take the training wheels off. And I, w I wouldn't just take the training wheels off and say, go get it, watch out, you're going to crash. Instead, what I would do is I'd hold onto their seat, I'd run behind them and I would say, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. And as I let go, my kid would say, look at me, dad, I can do it, I can do it. In that very moment, my kid before I let go didn't necessarily believe he could do it, but because I believed in, in him, it transferred to him believing in himself. And the same is true for people on a team. People join organizations and they're, they're, they're trying new things and you want them to grow and people have FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt when trying oh. new things. And, and we, can, we can help with that by transferring belief. And we do so by not just saying, hey, I believe in you, but by making it what's known as evidence-based belief. I believe in you because I believe in you because I've seen you do X, Y, and Z. And that's why I know you can be successful with this. It's just a little, little technique that really helps people realize their potential. And it's called FUD or I mean, FUD is the, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not referring to the, what it's called FUD, but it, it you see, what was the analogy you use FUD again? Faith? Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Huh. It, it, it creeps into us all the time. We, when, mm -hmm. Whenever we want to do something, we don't do it for some reason. It's usually out of fear or we're uncertain that we can do it or we have doubt in ourselves or somebody else. And, and FUD is a, big, is a big factor that limits people's growth. And especially if you're mm -hmm. trying to build an empowered business where people are empowered to make decisions and, and, and help grow the organization, FUD can be a big problem. Yeah. No more FUD. I'm making shirts for that around the we office. We are no FUD. Stamp out no FUD. FUD. No, FUD. <laughs> no FUD. All fun, no FUD. So, so this has been pretty interesting. What else have we missed that maybe we should talk about in your book? You know, well, there, are, there are essentially five pillars. Another pillar is that the idea that leaders shape culture through purpose and direction. And, and in, in that process, as we were talking about culture, culture is important because the, the, how people think affects how they feel. And how people think and feel determines how they act. How a team acts determines how the organization performs. And an organization, you know, culture is shaped by the lowest level of acceptable behavior inside an organization. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we have people aligned around the right purpose and the, and, and are given the right direction in an organization or, or things just certainly won't come out so well. All ships must sail in the same direction. 
it, it's about alignment, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the, there's the one of the other pillars is is that leaders are aware of the echo of their voice, and I'll share with you as you know from running your business, Chris, your team will decide what type of day they're going to have based on the kind of day you're having, and if the team sees you as angry or stressed or anything like that, they're probably not going to bring something to you that's important because they're going to be afraid. You know, we as leaders always have to realize that that we have to become aware of the echo of our voice because that's what leadership is really about. Mm-hmm. The signal that we put out that, that our people pick up on, yeah. the echo of our voice, the especially when it's coming down the hall and it's yelling, if it's clearly angry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so tell us about some of the things you do on your website. You do some consulting, speaking, and other things, I believe. Yeah, I do a bunch of keynote speaking all over the country. It's super fun. I absolutely love doing it, kind of lighting up a crowd, getting them all super revved up and giving them some actionable ways that they can truly grow their business. And then I do angel investing for come. I sit on boards, angel investing. I, I, I have, you know what, having sold my businesses, it, life is really fun now. I mean, it's super fun. And I get to do the things I've always wanted to do. And that's kind of a blast. It kind of sucks. They make you do the first part first and the second part second. <laughs> yeah. Just go, just go, just skip the part. Like all my employees just tell me, you should go be a consultant, Chris. And I'm like, we're running like multiple companies here at the same time. How much time do you think I fucking have? But then, 2008 <laughs> fixed all that. I was like, wow, I have plenty of time to be a consultant now. So, Brian, it's been wonderful to have you on. Give us your dot coms, the final pitch out for people to order up your book wherever fine books are sold. Sure, BrianGottlieb.com. Now, by the way, if you love audiobooks, I have to pitch my audiobook here because the, while I read the second half of the book, I needed a really cool narrator to read the first half, a great storyteller because it is a parable. And I collaborated with Eduardo Ballerini, probably one of the most famous narrators of all time. He actually is the voice of the parable and he does such a great job. Oh, really? It's a great book. I think you'll really enjoy it. It'll be well worth your while to read. The, uh, he sounds like he should do opera, like he's an opera singer with, <laughs> with that title, so with that name, you know what I mean? He used to uh, be an actor but, on The Sopranos, by the way. Oh, was he? Yeah. Was he? Yeah. We, yeah. we just had somebody who was on The Sopranos on recently. It was one of the, it was one of the, down the line of lists, but I think it was the mother of Chris, Chris, Christopherson, Chris, Christer, whatever, that kid, the one kid, the heroin kid. I think she was the mother yeah. of the heroin kid. Yeah. So, so essentially, if, if, you, if you have a business and you're trying to grow it and you don't know where to turn, this book is for you. It's really going to help you build an aligned team that's going to perform consistently and at a high level. Oh, it's been wonderful to have you on. Thank you very much, Brian, for coming on the Appreciate show. Appreciate you, Chris. Thanks, my for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Foss. Chris Foss, one of the TikTokity and all this crazy place on the internet. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. We'll see you next time. That shows.